Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, today we will be studying about pancreas. I am Dr. Daksha Dixit, Professor of Anatomy from Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College, Kaili Academy of Higher Education and Research, Belagavi. Before we go on to study the pancreas, let us see a clinical case scenario. A 55 year old male patient had progressive jaundice, pale greasy stools, itching of skin, loss of appetite and weight and back pain. On examination, he had a palpable gallbladder and ascites. Thorough investigations were carried out and the clinical diagnosis was done with said carcinoma of head of pancreas. Let us just keep these symptoms in mind. As we go through the class, we will understand why they have developed and how the diagnosis was reached. We will be covering up pancreas under these following headings. Introduction, extent, situation, shape and size, parts of pancreas, the relations which will include the peritoneal as well as the visceral relations, the pancreatic ducts, the blood supply which will include the arterial supply and the venous drainage, the lymphatic drainage, the nerve supply and the applied anatomy points. Introduction Pancreas is a gland related to the gastrointestinal system. It is a soft lobulated gland having both exocrine as well as endocrine parts. It lies retroperitoneal. It lies on the posterior abdominal wall behind the stomach separated by the cavity of lesser sac. The picture here shows us the pancreas which lies on the posterior abdominal wall related posteriorly to structures like the inferior vena cava, the abdominal iota, the left suprarenal gland, the left kidney, all these structures which lie just on the posterior abdominal wall. Now we will go on to the extent, situation, shape and size. The pancreas extends to the left and moves slightly upwards across the posterior abdominal wall from the concavity of the duodenum right through the hilum of spleen. As is shown here in the picture, it begins on the right side within the concavity of the duodenum travels towards the left and slightly upwards and ends at the hilum of the spleen. Situation, it lies in the posterior part of the epigastrium and the left hypochondriac regions of the abdomen. Shape, the shape of the pancreas is retort shaped it looks like a retort shaped flask, the bowl of the retort representing the head of the pancreas. The length of the pancreas measures between 12 to 15 centimeters, the breadth between 3 to 4 centimeters. It is 1.5 to 2 centimeters thick and weighs anywhere between 80 to 90 grams. Let us now see the parts of the pancreas. The pancreas has four parts, head, neck, body and tail. This picture shows us the same. The part starting from the right end of the pancreas is the head which fits into the concavity of the duodenum. It has a process on its inferior aspect which is the hook like uncinate process. Next comes the narrow neck 
which further continues as the body of the pancreas, which then tapers and ends in the tail, which is related to the hilum of the spleen. Along the upper border of the body of pancreas, we see a projection which is called as the tuber omentale. So, the parts of the pancreas from right to left are head, neck, body and tail. So, head is a part contained within the curve of the duodenum. Neck is a narrow constriction lying in front of the formation of the portal vein. Body is triangular on cross section, extends from front of the abdominal iota right up to front of the left kidney. Tail extends between the two layers of the linorenal ligament and reaches up to the hilum of the spleen. The junction between the head and the neck in front is separated by groove for the gastroduodenal artery and behind it is marked by the right margin of groove for the portal vein. Junction between the neck and the body in front is not possible to be demarcated whereas behind it is separated by the left margin of the groove for the portal vein. Junction between the body and the tail in front is not distinguishable but behind it is separated by the junction of the peritoneal and non-peritoneal areas of the pancreas. Going on to the peritoneal relations of the pancreas. This is a section, a sagittal section passing through the abdomen. What we see here anteriorly is cut section of the stomach with its peritoneal relations that is the lesser omentum which splits into two along the surfaces of the stomach and at the greater curvature again these two layers join, go down, fold on itself and come up thus forming the greater omentum which reaches the transverse colon, splits and encloses the surfaces of the transverse colon and then we have the transverse mesocolon which goes towards the posterior abdominal wall. What is seen here is the posterior abdominal wall on which lies the pancreas. Here we can see that the pancreas is retroperitoneal that is it lies on the posterior abdominal wall. So, only its antero superior and antero inferior surfaces are related to the peritoneum. As is seen here, the superior layer of the transverse mesocolon covers the antero superior surface of the pancreas while the inferior layer of the transverse mesocolon covers or lies anterior to the antero inferior surface of the pancreas. Thus, the antero superior surface of pancreas is separated by the peritoneum of the lesser sac while the antero inferior surface of pancreas is covered by the peritoneum of the greater sac. So, major portion of the pancreas is retroperitoneal, only its antero superior and antero inferior surfaces are covered by peritoneum of lesser sac and greater sac respectively. Let us now go on to see the visceral relations of the parts of the pancreas. The head of the pancreas, it is nothing but the enlarged right extremity of the pancreas. It is contained within the C-shaped concavity or curve of the duodenum. The head is flattened from before backwards and it lies at the lower level as compared to the body of the pancreas. It lies opposite the L1 and L2 vertebrae. The picture here shows us the right extremity of the pancreas that is the head which lies within the concavity of the duodenum. The head shows presence of two surfaces, anterior surface and posterior surface, four borders that is the superior border, 
the inferior border, the right border and the left border. It also shows presence of the hook like uncinate process which is related to the inferior part of the head. Let us say relations of these surfaces. The anterior surface of the head of pancreas is directed forwards and laterally. It is separated from the neck of the pancreas by groove for the gastroduodenal artery. It is related to the upper part of the head of the pancreas is non-peritoneal and is related to the transverse colon and the first part of the duodenum. The lower part of the head is covered by peritoneum and is related to the coils of jejunum. Whereas, the anterior surface of the uncinate process is related to the superior mesenteric vessels. The posterior surface of the head of pancreas is non-peritoneal. It is directed backwards and medially and it is related to the inferior vena cava, the right and left renal veins, right crust of diaphragm, the right middle suprarenal, renal and gonadal arteries, the cisterna chile, a zygous vein and the bile duct which is seen in the groove between the pancreas and the second part of duodenum. These are the posterior relations of the head of pancreas. The borders. The superior border of head of pancreas is overlapped by the first part of duodenum. The right inferior and left borders are related or overlapped by adjoining surfaces of the second, third and fourth part of the duodenum. The uncinate process, it is a triangular projection arising from the lower and left part of the head of pancreas. It passes upwards and medially. Relations of uncinate process. Anteriorly, it is related to the superior mesenteric vessels, while posteriorly, it is related to the abdominal aorta. It is related superiorly to the left renal vein. Let us now move on to the neck of pancreas. The neck connects the head with the body measures about 2 cm in length. It presents two surfaces, anterior and posterior, two borders, superior and inferior. The anterior surface is covered with peritoneum of lesser sac and is related to the pyloric end of stomach. The posterior surface is non-peritoneal, presents a shallow groove containing the superior mesenteric vein in the lower part and trunk of portal vein in the upper part. The superior border of the neck is overlapped by the upper part of duodenum, while the inferior border gives attachment to root of transverse mesocolon. This feature shows us relations of the neck of pancreas. This is the outline of neck of pancreas showing its anterior relation to the pyloric part of the stomach. This picture shows us the posterior relations of the neck of pancreas which is related to the splenic vein, the superior mesenteric vein in the lower part and the trunk of the portal vein in the upper part. The same is seen here in this picture. This is a posterior view which shows us the duodenum, the head, uncinate process, neck and part of body of the pancreas. It shows the posterior relations of the neck of pancreas which is formed by the superior mesenteric vein in the lower part which is then joined by the splenic vein and in the upper part the neck is related to the trunk of the portal vein. 
we now move on to see the relations of the body of pancreas the body of pancreas is prismoid in appearance triangular on cross section it extends from front of abdominal aorta to front of the left kidney it presents three surfaces and three borders the three surfaces are antero superior antero inferior and posterior surface while the three borders are superior anterior and inferior borders the picture here shows us a section through the body of the pancreas so this is the superior border the inferior border and the anterior border and the three surfaces are antero superior surface antero inferior surface and the flat posterior surface which rests on the posterior abdominal wall let us see relations of the surfaces of body of pancreas the antero superior surface is slightly concave directed forwards and upwards and is covered with peritoneum of the lesser sac it is related to the stomach which is separated by the lesser sac the picture here shows us a section through the abdomen what we see here is the pancreas the head neck and body of pancreas up to the tail and just anterior to it we see the lesser sac separating the antero superior surface from the stomach which lies anterior to the lesser sac the antero inferior surface of body of pancreas is directed downwards and forwards and is covered by peritoneum of greater sac it is related to the duodenal jejunal flexure the coils of jejunum and the left colic flexure the picture here shows us the antero inferior surface of the pancreas of the body of pancreas related to the duodenal jejunal flexure the coils of jejunum and the left colic flexure the posterior surface of body of pancreas is entirely non peritoneal and it is related to the abdominal aorta with origin of the superior mesenteric artery the left crust of diaphragm the left psoas major muscle and the sympathetic trunk the left suprarenal gland left kidney left renal vessels and pelvis of left ureter left suprarenal left gonadal and splenic veins the same is seen here in this picture the dotted outline of the pancreas and this is the posterior surface of body of pancreas related to abdominal aorta left crust of diaphragm the sympathetic trunk the left suprarenal gland the left kidney pelvis of left ureter and the veins which are seen related to these structures that is the left suprarenal vein the left renal vein and the left gonadal veins the borders of the body of pancreas three borders superior border anterior border and inferior border the superior border presents a conical projection upwards which is the tuber omentale close to its right end and this is related to the celiac trunk and the hepatic artery while the rest of the superior border is related to the splenic artery the anterior border of the body of pancreas gives attachment to the root of transverse mesocolon the inferior border of body of pancreas is related to the superior mesenteric vessels this picture here shows us the three borders and their relations this is the superior border of the body of pancreas showing the tuber omentale which is related to celiac trunk and hepatic artery the rest of the superior border is related to the tortuously running splenic artery this is the anterior border of body of pancreas which shows attachment of the root of the transverse mesocolon while this is the inferior border of the pancreas 
which is related to the superior mesenteric vessels. Going on to the tail of pancreas, this is a narrow left end of the gland. It passes between the layers of linorenal ligament and reaches the hilum of the spleen. It is the most mobile part of the gland or it is the only intraperitoneal part of the gland. It lies opposite the lower border of T12 vertebra. This picture again is posterior view of the pancreas showing the parts that is the head, uncinate process, the neck, the body and the tail of the pancreas. As is seen here, colored in purple are or is the intraperitoneal part of the pancreas which is a tail of pancreas lying between the two layers of the linorenal ligament. The relations of the tail of pancreas. Anteriorly, the tail of pancreas is related to the stomach separated by the lesser sac while posteriorly the tail is related to the spleen and the splenic vessels and inferiorly it is related to the left colic flexure. The same is shown here in the picture. The tail related posteriorly to the spleen and the splenic vessels and inferiorly to the left colic flexure. Going on to the pancreatic ducts. The pancreas has two ducts, the main pancreatic duct and the accessory pancreatic duct. The main pancreatic duct also called as the duct of Virsan. It begins in the tail by union of a number of smaller ducts, passes from left towards the right running through the body of the pancreas. It receives smaller ducts at regular angles thus giving a herring bone pattern. At the neck of the pancreas, the main pancreatic duct passes downwards, backwards and to the right to reach the posteromedial wall of the second part of duodenum where it meets the bile duct. Both these ducts pierce the duodenal wall separately and later they unite to form the ampulla of waiter which opens at the summit of the major duodenal papilla which lies 8 to 10 centimeters distal to the pyloric end of the stomach. This picture shows us the main pancreatic duct which begins at the tail, proceeds from left to right, receives the smaller duct at regular angles showing the herringbone pattern, further down it moves forwards and downwards and meets with the bile duct, both the ducts separately passing through the wall of the duodenum and opening at the summit of the major duodenal papilla on the posteromedial wall of the second part of duodenum which lies about 8 to 10 centimeters distal to the pyloric end of the stomach. The accessory pancreatic duct also known as the duct of Santorini. It receives secretion from the uncinate process, passes upwards and to the right in front of the main pancreatic duct with which it is united by a communicating duct. This accessory pancreatic duct opens into the second part of duodenum on the summit of the minor duodenal papilla which is about 2 centimeters above and slightly anterior to the major duodenal papilla. This picture shows us the accessory pancreatic duct draining the secretions from the uncinate process going upwards and forwards and laterally crossing the major pancreatic duct from the anterior aspect and then opening at the minor duodenal papilla which lies 2 centimeters above and anterior to the major duodenal papilla. Moving on to see the arterial supply of the pancreas. The head and neck of the pancreas receive the arterial blood supply 
from ventral and dorsal anastomosis of the superior and inferior pancreatico duodenal arteries the body and the tail receive blood from the pancreatic branches of the splenic artery there is a large artery here seen as the arteria pancreatica magna which accompanies the main pancreatic duct it's a branch coming from the splenic artery the picture here shows us the various parts of the pancreas we see the head and neck receiving the blood supply from superior pancreatico duodenal artery which has ventral and dorsal anastomosis with the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery superior pancreatico duodenal artery is coming from the hepatic artery which is a branch of the celiac trunk while the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery is a branch coming from the superior mesenteric artery the body and the tail receive branches or arterial supply from the branches coming from the splenic artery and one such large branch is called as the arteria pancreatica magna similarly there is a branch coming specifically to supply the tail of the pancreas from the splenic artery which is known as the arteria cordae pancreatis so this picture again shows us the arterial supply of pancreas head and neck receiving blood from the dorsal and ventral anastomosis between the superior pancreatico duodenal artery and inferior pancreatico duodenal artery body and tail receiving blood supply from branches of splenic artery two named branches arteria pancreatica magna which accompanies the major pancreatic duct and arteria cordae pancreatis which supplies blood to the tail of the pancreas going on to the venous drainage of pancreas veins correspond to the arteries and they drain into the superior mesenteric vein the splenic vein and into the trunk of the portal vein this is a posterior view of the pancreas no sorry i'll repeat moving on to the venous drainage of the pancreas veins correspond to the arteries and drain the blood into the superior mesenteric vein the splenic vein and the trunk of the portal vein this picture shows us the veins draining into the splenic vein the superior mesenteric vein and these two together forming the trunk of the portal vein another picture showing the venous drainage of the pancreas where part of the pancreas has been removed to see clearer view of the posteriorly placed veins so draining the tail and the body of the pancreas the veins enter or drain into the splenic vein the superior mesenteric vein receives venous blood from the uncinate process neck and the head and then joins with the splenic to form the trunk of the portal vein which receives blood from upper part of the head and neck of the pancreas so that's the venous drainage of pancreas going on to see the lymphatic drainage of pancreas the head and neck drain into ventral and dorsal groups of pancreatico duodenal lymph nodes the body and tail of pancreas drain into pancreatico splenic lymph nodes efferent vessels from these terminate into the celiac and superior mesenteric group of preaortic lymph nodes this picture here shows us the lymphatic drainage of pancreas the head and the neck region draining into anterior and posterior pancreatico duodenal group of lymph nodes while the body and tail drains into the pancreatico splenic group of lymph nodes and efferents from all these draining into the superior mesenteric and the celiac group of preaortic lymph nodes going on to the nerve supply of pancreas the sympathetic nerves are coming from the celiac and the superior mesenteric plexuses the parasympathetic fibers are coming from both the vagus nerves 
secretory activities of the exocrine part of the pancreas is partly controlled by nerves and partly by the hormones like secretin and pancreozymin produced from the duodenal mucosa in response to the entry of acidified gastric contents. We now go on to see the applied anatomy of pancreas. Annular pancreas. This is when the part of the head of pancreas splits into two parts encircling the second part of duodenum completely and this at times can give rise to duodenal obstruction. So, a bifid mass of tissue encircling the second part of duodenum from anterior as well as posterior aspects is called as an annular pancreas which can produce duodenal obstruction. It is a developmental anomaly. Next is carcinoma of head of pancreas. A malignant growth may obstruct the bile duct or the hepatopancreatic ampulla. The obstruction will cause retention of bile pigments, enlargement of the gallbladder and obstructive jaundice. This is what was seen in our clinical case scenario. It will then compress the portal vein producing signs of ascites or collection of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. It may also constrict the pylorus producing pyloric obstruction. So, thus it explains the various symptoms which were seen in the case scenario of carcinoma of head of pancreas. The next applied anatomy point is the pancreatic tail and its relation to splenectomy. The tail of pancreas as we know lies in the linorenal ligament. It may sometimes result in damage to the tail during splenectomy. The damaged pancreas then releases enzymes that start to digest the surrounding tissues with serious complications. Next we see rupture of the pancreas. Severe penetrating trauma may rupture the pancreas which can occur in force of impalement on a steering wheel in an automobile accident. The vertebral column here acts as an anvil and the traumatic force may rupture the soft and friable pancreas. The damaged pancreatic tissue releases activated pancreatic enzymes that produce signs and symptoms of acute peritonitis. Next we see pancreatectomy. This is done for the treatment of chronic pancreatitis wherein most of the pancreas may be removed except the head of pancreas. The anatomical relationships and blood supply of the head of pancreas, bile duct and duodenum make it impossible to remove the head of pancreas and that is why a rim of pancreas is retained along the medial border of the duodenum to preserve the duodenal blood supply. Next we see pancreatic cyst or pseudocyst of pancreas. Inflammation of the pancreas can spread to the peritoneum forming the posterior wall of the lesser sac. This in turn can lead to adhesions and closing of the lesser sac to form a pseudocyst. This cyst can bulge forwards further displacing the stomach and the transverse colon. Such a cystic retroperitoneal tumour will not move with respiration. So, that is a pseudo cyst of the pancreas or a pancreatic cyst. Next we see accessory pancreatic tissue. This may develop in the stomach, duodenum, ileum or an ileal diverticulum. However, stomach and duodenum are the most common sites. This tissue may contain pancreatic islet cells that may produce glucagon and 
insulin. Next is ectopic pancreas. This may be found in the submucosa of the stomach, duodenum, small intestine including Meckel's diverticulum, gallbladder and spleen. When present, it may protrude into the lumen of the gut tube and may be responsible for causing intersusception. These were the applied anatomy points of pancreas. Thus, to recapitulate, we started the class with the case scenario. We then went on to see the introduction, extent, situation, shape and size of the pancreas. We went on to see the four parts of the pancreas that is the head, neck, body and tail. We studied the peritoneal and visceral relations of all the parts of the pancreas. We went on to see the blood supply that is the arterial supply and the venous drainage of the pancreas, the lymphatic drainage and the nerve supply of the pancreas and finally we went on to see the various applied anatomy aspects related to the pancreas and that is how we understood the various signs and symptoms which were seen in our case scenario of carcinoma of head of pancreas, how it gave rise to the various symptoms and signs and what gave rise to the obstructive jaundice in our case scenario. That is how we have covered the entire topic of gross anatomy of pancreas. Thank you.